And I want to talk to you a little bit about sex and money, um, or specifically men paying for sex. Um, now, I don't want to talk actually technically about prostitution. That's your own business. I don't don't really care. Not I've never partaken. Um, just for me, it, it doesn't seem the same. It doesn't seem I, I want to earn it personally. It, it it's different for me that way. Um, but that's not even really what I want to talk to you about. What I want to talk to you about directly here is the indirect ways that men pay for sex. Things like um, buying dinner, supplicating in various ways, buying expensive cars, buying expensive houses, trying to put on fronts, um, those sorts of things. The interesting thing about it is I, I don't like it, obviously, because number one, it's expensive. If you go out as much as I do and go on as many dates as I have at, at certain periods of my life, it gets incredibly expensive to do that. Um, but more to the point, it doesn't really work, okay? That's, that's a, maybe a controversial statement to say that it doesn't work. And to a point, it maybe can work. And if you have enough money, um, certainly you can buy a lot of things with it. Um, I know a friend of mine who has a very good game was advising one of my students, an Indian guy, who uh, wanted to get like white girls. Um, and he kind of told him sort of a, a humorous way to do it. He said the easiest way to do it is, okay, number one, you're no longer from India, you're now from Dubai. Um, girls may not know where Dubai is, but like probably some girl she knows is fucking some guy from Dubai, so tell her that. Um, it helps if you suddenly have a jet. Um, it helps if you have a house that's on a hill that's a little bigger than the other houses on other hills. Um, it'll be good if you have some, some drugs around, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? So he's kind of telling this, this humorous way of like how to use money to get girls. And the fact of the matter is using money can get you girls in a way, but it depends how you use it and it depends how you, there, there's a way to use it and a way not to use it. And the way not to use it usually is to lead with it. Um, even if you look at that example he just gave, that example is still less bad and less blatant than going up to a girl and be like, hey, what's up, baby, I'm rich. Or hey, what, what's up, I have a Ferrari. What he's actually doing in that case is um, creating a lifestyle, right? You get, have the drugs, have the parties at your house, have the promoters bring girls there, that sort of thing. That can work um, in a sense because now you're just dealing with a logistical issue. You're not using the money itself for value, at least not directly until you're a human being, right? So that doesn't work as well. Um, to illustrate this point, I want to talk to you about a little psychological experiment that was done. Basically, uh, they put people in a room and the people were promised they would do some fun thing in the room. And then they went in the room and they did basically the most boring task you could possibly imagine. They basically like twisted pegs for like an hour straight, like mind-numbingly, agonizingly boring. Um, and then when they were leaving, the real experiment began because the, the person administering the test said that the person had promised them the experiment would be fun, had gone home for the day, and they would need to tell that to the next person. And they offered them money to tell the next person that the experiment was going to be fun. And they experimented with offering them from a dollar to twenty dollars to a hundred dollars. And what they found is that the people who went ahead and told the people that it was fun, that were paid a hundred dollars, when asked later if the experiment was fun, said that it was not. The people that were paid only one dollar, however, when asked if it was fun, said that the experiment had actually been fun. Uh, the rationale for this was that when people had violated their integrity for a lot of money, it was easy for them to rationalize they'd just done it for the money. But when people had violated their integrity for a small amount of money, then they had to accept the fact that it wasn't about the money, um, and then they had to almost change their perception to make themselves an honest person. Okay? The same sort of thing can happen with girls and money, which is if you lead with money, even if you get the girls by using the money, they can rationalize they're with you because you're rich or they're with you because of lifestyle. And then a few things can happen. Number one, if someone comes along with a bigger, better lifestyle, you can be left out. Um, and then number two, the type of way that they like you um, almost isn't the same as if they like you for you. In fact, a lot of times girls will become resentful of guys with money um, and think that they're using their money to try and trap them or, or like control them and, um, and will even go and cheat, cheat on guys and use that as an excuse. Um, lastly, if you lead with money, what will happen a lot of times is girls will try and play you or game you. Uh, this has happened to me many, many times as a sort of a playerish guy but who has um, achieved a certain amount of success in, in my life. Um, what will happen is I'll have a girl that's like ready to go home with me, like super down for anything. And then I'll say something a little impressive or say something that conveys a little bit of success. And she'll just like, her eyes will light up. And then she'll be like, you know what? You should take me on a date. Here's my phone number. I'm like, wait, I thought we were going home right now. She's like, no, 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 take me on a date. You know, uh, I'll go out with you on Tuesday. I'm like, wait, what just happened? And I realized when she was just in it for the fun, when she was in it for the personality, she was down to have sex. But as soon as she viewed me as a guy with cash, a guy with like that long-term potential, a guy that she could use for resources, now all of a sudden she didn't want to mess it up by being perceived as slutty and it massively changed her behavior. It made her actually play harder to get with me than if I hadn't had any resources. So that's the theory. Now let's get specific. I'm going to tell you about a few different instances where these sorts of things have happened in my own personal life. Okay, so I'm going to tell you three quick stories of 
my own personal life involving money and girls. These are kind of the sad tear stories of my life. The first one was I had met a girl in Colorado and I was actually leaving town <clears throat> and I was gonna go to Vegas uh, and then on to Los Angeles. And so I, I knew that I would not be able to see the girl again for like three weeks. I liked the girl. It had gone pretty well. You know, we'd almost almost had sex, but not quite yet. Um, and uh, so I invited her to come to Vegas with me. I actually like just offered to buy her a plane ticket out and she could come meet us when I was out there. I wasn't actually even trying to lead with money. It was actually just the only way that I could legitimately see her anytime in the near future. However, I was with two friends of mine, uh, one of whom was very much in the like leading with money frame. And it was, he was sort of scheduling the trip and running the show, booking the rooms, that sort of thing. <clears throat> and so what ended up happening uh, was I, I set up the trip and then at the last minute, the girl asked if it would be okay if her friend came too, because her friend wanted to come to Vegas, which obviously not something I liked. Um, but at that point I'd already paid for the ticket. I was like, well, fine, I guess we'll just see how this plays out. Girl got there before her friend, and my the guys I was with started like showering money at the situation, trying to impress. And you could just see the girl getting more and more turned off. Um, <clears throat> the more it happened, the more it was very tryhard. Then when the girl's friend got there, she took one look at my friends, and this girl had come to Vegas to get laid for sure. Um, took one look at my friends, was like, uh -uh, I'm not sleeping with them. Literally almost kidnapped her friend, took her out to the club, and they went and fucked some other dudes. So um, that was a nice use of my. Uh, my plane fare. Um, <clears throat> one of the more sad and embarrassing moments of my life. <clears throat> Second one was when I was playing poker. I uh, actually picked up a girl who worked at the casino and um, I picked her up on the premise of sort of like being sort of baller, having lots of money, that sort of thing. Um, what I had done actually was I was super buried. I was down like $5,000 for the day and I was like very depressed, but I talked to this girl and we, you know, had a little flirtation. And I basically said, you know, uh, I'm super buried today. I'm going to try and play till, uh, till I get out of it. When is, when is your shift over? How long are you here for? She told me, I said, okay, well, look, if I'm actually even or ahead by the time um, that you get off work, I would love to buy you dinner um, just as a celebration. If not, then I'll probably be too depressed to take anybody to dinner and I don't want to see you. But um, if, uh, if it works out, uh, that'd be fun. And she's like, yeah, totally. Um, so I, when she went on her break, I went to the cage, bought a bunch more chips, made it look like I made a bunch more money than I did. I actually did win a lot back, but I didn't win all the way back. And I uh, ended up, you know, taking her out um, and playing sort of the baller card, took her to like sushi and a massage and sort of and not, not super crazy, but like baller-ish date. Um, and then what ended up happening predictably there, I dated her for a couple weeks. And then at that point, she started dating somebody else from the casino who actually was a baller, actually was playing like, you know, millionaire type games. Um, and so I got my comeuppance, right? I tried to play the baller card and there was someone playing it better than me. So fair enough. Um, the third one, however, I think is the saddest story of all, although it's less dramatic. <clears throat> and that one is, I spent from essentially, as, long, as soon as I was conscious and able to understand what, movie, what movies were telling me about men and women, until probably at least my 18th birthday, if not into my early 20s, I spent all this time and energy and effort trying to have the perfect resume, have the good job, have be the star athlete, do all these things. And some of them I did for myself, granted, I, I'm a big fan of excellence and I'm glad I did them. I really am because of what has brought me in life in the long run. But I spent all this time, energy and effort trying to get girls through those means and I had to spend all my time looking around at these guys who I considered losers, guys who I considered douchey, guys who I considered creepy and awful and terrible people getting the girls that I wanted when I was trying so hard. And that maybe is the most tragic of all because that happens to probably 90% of guys, if not more, in this country and probably in the world. Okay, so I've talked a lot so far about how money is not to be used, how it's ineffective, how it creates the wrong frame, how it can set you up badly. Does this mean that I'm saying that having money never helps you or that you shouldn't attempt to be wealthy? Absolutely not. Now, there are a lot of ways that money, financial success, those sorts of things can help you in the game. And here's kind of how they break down. Number one, they can be used indirectly, sort of to build lifestyle, to gain access, to be in the right circles around the right type of people um, and around the type of girls you want to meet. And also, they can be used uh, to convey status in a positive way as opposed to a negative way. Again, the key word here is indirect, okay? Um, I used to tell people a lot of times, um, say you had like a, a flashy, fancy car, and you walked around and you're like, I have a Ferrari, I have a Ferrari, I have a Ferrari. That's pretty lame. All right, now it's cool that you have a Ferrari, but it's pretty lame that you're trying to use it that way. But if, on the other hand, you happen to be telling a story and you're like, you know, I was speeding, I was going really fast, and, um, you know, the, the, the cop pulled me over, because you know how they are about, like, red cars. Um, they just, you know, they're, they're profiling, but, you know, whatever, blah, 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 right? Telling a story that would be good enough without that fact, you happen to throw it in, then it's okay. 
Or another way that's really good is um, if someone says like, what do you do for a living? You're like, oh, I don't really want to talk about it. Like, no, 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 what do you want to do? You're like, oh, you know, I'm a whatever, plastic surgeon or like a rocket scientist or whatever like really cool profession you have where I'm a, I own XYZ business, right? So that's a really good way to use it is to not bring it up yourself, to even go out of your way not to bring it up, but to have it just come out naturally, all right? And that's how it should come out. So it's ideal if those sorts of things come up obliquely as though they're almost like an accident they came up. Here's another great way though, I'll tell you kind of a story. Uh, a guy who used to teach me poker, absolute baller, makes tons and tons of money and actually uses his money fairly effectively to get girls and what he did, he actually like bought lots of drinks for people, hosted events, took people out, that sort of thing. Um, and he would spend tons of money on entertaining, but the deal was this. He didn't do it directly to get the girls. He didn't try and buy the girls. In fact, he would not spend the money directly on the girls he was even interested in. He would spend the money on the whole event. He'd spend the money on making sure everybody around him had a good time and that there was a party going on and then whatever happened would happen obliquely because of the party, all right? So the key thing here is that whatever you can do with money, it's great to have it, but spend it on yourself, spend it on your lifestyle, spend it on things you are really into and things you want to do rather than on directly trying to get girls because that's going to set a terrible frame. Also don't lead with it. It's much better if the girl finds out you're a really cool person and then later it's like, oh, he has money also, as opposed to, hey, here's this guy that has money, maybe I can use him for it, maybe I can get in that way. It sets the frame in a really bad way from the very start, okay? So the point is, it's an asset like any other. It's literally an asset actually, um, but it's something that should be a positive if used well, do not use it badly. Lastly, if you're in a one night stand situation, do not bring up material success because a lot of times that will make the girl change the frame, try and like date you, try and make you take her on a bunch of dates. It's not about the experience. And remember, money is not relevant in that situation anyway, so don't lead with it. Lead with experience, okay? Uh, so that's a little bit on how to use money, how not to use money. Just to recap, money is not usually that effective because it sets bad frames, um, because it's a logical construct. It's not something that existed in evolution. Um, and because even if it does work, it again sets bad frames. So it can set a bad frame for the interaction as in you're trying to buy them, you must be needy, you must not have enough going on, you're trying too hard. Or even if it does work, it can set the frame of here's the guy that I want to take, on, have, take me on dates, here's the guy that I'm using for my money, his money, etc., etc. So it's not coming from the right place. One last area where money and um, lifestyle can really help you is if you do want a girlfriend and particularly if you want to get day twos or if you want um, the girl to have an easy time telling her friends about you and selling you to her friends. Um, back in the day, uh, back in the, the Project Hollywood times, um, Style was one of the guys there. He's the guy that actually wrote the book The Game and he did, definitely did not have by any stretch the best game in the house. However, he did really, really well with getting girls out on day twos. And the reason for that was that he was a writer for Rolling Stone. He had a, he was like knew Motley Crue, he knew um, uh, Marilyn Manson, all these different celebrities. And so he was invited to all these like very high end events. And think about it: if a girl's on the fence about you, and you invite her to like coffee versus you invite her to backstage at like a Motley Crue event, um, there's a little more draw to the second one. And so that's another way to use lifestyle to your advantage. Now you don't want to make that like a special case. You don't want to make it so that you're like breaking the bank to be with a girl and you try and impress her and then you create this like abundant lifestyle like this this perception for her and then down the road she finds out it's fake and then you, you know uh, he was based on the wrong premise, she gets pissed off, she falls out of love, whatever. You don't want that. But if you do happen to have that lifestyle, by all means use it. By all means don't like go out of your way to be more lame than you are either. Okay? But don't lead with it. Lead with your personality first and let the money be a bonus. Okay? That's it. I think I've hammered this topic to death. So take care. Until next time.